Today I had the unique experience to visit Mike Perrow's motorcycle gallery which is about to open up in a week's time. Also got to chat to Mike himself and uh, find out a bit about his history and also about the collection. Enjoy. Thanks Mike for inviting me along today. Um, you've got this new gallery of motorcycles uh, which is a fantastic opportunity for Cantabrians and New Zealanders to view bikes from the 70s, 80s and 90s, particularly mm. some of the racing bikes that you've, you've raced over the years. Yeah. Can you tell me a bit about it? Yeah. Well, uh, as, uh, as I was saying earlier, this uh, was an office up until recently. Uh, it was an office built after the earthquakes, so we established out here in the suburbs. And uh, that period's come to an end. We've moved out, and so I reconfigured it took out all the desks and computers and as you can see brought in some real stuff um, yeah. we've got motorcycles everywhere um, and yeah it, it took about six months to get the consent from the council yeah I've never been asked about a motorcycle uh, gallery before yeah. Uh, like yeah. this, and uh, let alone Japanese classic uh, which is a fairly new term for a lot of people um, yeah so um, yeah we, we started off with the word out there and uh, as you can imagine it got out there on social media and um, so uh, yeah. Overnight almost we got 60 machines and we've yeah. got some beautiful machines here that have been kindly donated from all over New Zealand. Oh wow, gosh. I want to say donated, loaned. Yeah, loaned, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So you put it out on social media, I mean that's how I found out about your yeah, gallery here. Yeah. Um, and I've noticed that's been building a lot of enthusiasm. Yeah. Um, you've got the grand opening and you'll be opening quite soon. What, what yeah. date are you opening for? Uh, so we actually open uh, to the public on Friday the 24th of February. Yeah. So at 10 o'clock the doors open and we'll just play it from there. So we're open wins generally from Wednesday through to Sunday, so five days at this stage. We, we, we have um, with the option to go seven, we just thought we'd start with five while we've got things sorted. Yeah. Um, but um, obviously right through the weekend yeah. from, so yeah. every day 10 a.m. Yep. to 5 p.m. awesome great so, and, and you've got a, a, a long history with motorcycling mm -hmm. where did that all start uh, it started when I was 14 when I got on the back of an RD250 with my cousin yeah and I thought wow I'd never experienced 160 oh, hang on did I say that no that was many years ago yeah um, and we were you know I, I thought this is incredible how fast a, a motorbike was and yeah it was the speed that got me so within six months I bought my own RD250 yeah and uh, Yamaha and um, ever since then and, uh, and so I got into uh, I was a mechanic uh, I did my apprenticeship as a motorcycle mechanic yeah uh, did that when I was uh, 17, uh, 16, and, and came out, uh, set up a motorbike shop. And during that time, I was racing prod, 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 uh, production bikes right through to racing bikes. Yeah, and, yeah. and I was racing for Yamaha New Zealand, and uh, um, before I knew it, I had six national championships. Yeah. And, and set some New Zealand records yeah, as well yeah, for... Yeah. Yeah. some two-stroke bikes as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah I love cool. my two-strokes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I think I think a lot of us motorcyclists have a lot of passion around two-strokes, particularly um, that's the sort of bikes we learnt on. Yes. And um, learned how to put those, push those bikes to the max. Yeah. And um, and it's a shame that you know, obviously with the emissions and so forth, mm. there's less two-strokes around. Mm. Um, but yeah, I too also have a big passion for the old two strokes. I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely amazed and surprised that a lot of the younger guys in mm. their 20s, uh, you know, I've got this. Um, there's a resurgence. Passion. There's a, definitely a resurgence yeah. in two strokes. Um, yeah. And they seem to have a personality uh, of their own. And, yeah. And, um, well, as you know, the performance you can get out of a two stroke uh, yep. compared to a four stroke, the same CC is. is That's right. Yeah. That power band. And yeah. also tweaking with the, you know, the expansion chamber, yeah. chamber and all that kind of stuff. This. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Um, we'll have a look around at some of the bikes and um, maybe look at some of the bikes that you were yeah, racing in the early absolutely. days. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Well, um, my first bike was the RD350, which is this one here. The, well, it's not exactly the, the machine I started on, but I've always uh, loved these. Uh, um, and they're a very simple two-stroke. Two, uh, th my one was a 250, this is a 350. So I pulled this one apart, restored it uh, with the help of a mate. Um, well, he did most of it. <laughs> uh, but as you can see, it's come up quite nice. Um, after that came um, the 400s. And uh, this is not the first 400, but it's an RD400E. I love these because they had the footrests above the pipe. So when we when we're racing them, we had good ground clearance. Oh, wow. So one of these um, in the late seventies um, was my racing machine. Um, so I finished. Um, I won my second New Zealand Championship 
up to 410 cc on one of these. And was it naked like this? Yeah, yeah, there's yeah, completely no naked in those days. So yeah, only yeah. the racing bikes had fairings. Yeah. Um, speaking of racing bikes, we've got these two. Um, this one belongs to my mate Rod Price, um, but uh, it was a later model to the one I rode. I rode TZ 350s and 250s, uh, and also a 750 TZ 750. Um, but yeah, these are lovely. These are just um, uh, guided missiles. So we've got this one here, 1988, yep. and then you've got the uh, 1995 that I just bought this one. So this was Kenny Roberts' son, yeah. uh, Curtis Roberts owned this one. I um, bought it only a few months ago. And um, as you can see, we've put it back to the Marlborough colors. Yeah. <laughs> without the word Marlborough. That's um, right. So um, yeah, really enjoying, uh, I love my two strokes, there's four strokes here. We've probably got 75% half four strokes, but yep. uh, uh, two strokes is uh, what I did my time on. So CB1100R, um, most of the viewers will know one of these, uh, the, the like hen's teeth. This is absolutely immaculate with just 3,200 kilometers from brand new. Yeah. So um, the owners uh, have really looked after this one. Absolutely, um, yeah, straight out of the showroom. Yep, yep. absolutely. Okay, these two um, RG500 and RZ500. I think the RZ came out first and immediately after the RG. Uh, as you can see, these would be dream machines for mm. um, wannabe racers. Absolutely. I remember when it came out, it was everything I ever wanted. Yeah. Um, but I never got to own one. Um, I was still on the racetrack, but these are um, bred from the, um, the respective race machines. And have absolutely appreciated and value. I know quite a few mates who look up, you know, who've actually got these bikes, but um, a lot of people yeah. are looking for mint condition ones too. Yeah, and these two are uh, owned by the same guy. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. So, um, but really pleased to have these in here. And uh, being a two stroke, uh, uh, this being a uh, four, um, square four. Yeah. Um, yeah, interesting. Yes. So Mike, what's happening in this room? This is obviously work in progress at the moment yeah. for the opening. Yeah, hey look, um, I've got all these magazines uh, that I dug out of the garage. They go back to the 70s and 80s at Revs magazine. Oh, there's old Cross. Um, <laughs> so um, you guys can come in here and um, yep. just relax, uh, unwind, watch a bit more video on TV. Um, some old posters around here. We've got yeah. to finish this off in here, but um, yeah, just make this... Uh, another uh, place to unwind so you could spend hours if you want there's yep. plenty of videos um we've got five televisions going or tvs with yeah random stuff from the 70s 80s and 90s and as i was saying before to you before the video this kind of reminds me of the nelson museum mm. that has unfortunately closed down but now moved to invercargill yeah that had a sort of yeah. reading room with a whole lot of motorcycle books comfy place and you know that's, absolutely that's, uh look they've done a great job and now as you say that's the motorcycle mecca down in invercargill great place i was there on the opening night and they've done um their machines are obviously probably most of them are pre-1970 um ours start from 70s onwards and of course they're pretty much as you get well, clearly japanese and uh hey i love what they do um we're just on a smaller scale and uh and, and the more modern stuff that most of us have grown up on so yeah awesome well thanks mike for letting me come in and have a sneaky preview before the grand opening yeah. uh wish you best of luck i know i'll certainly be coming in to see um, how this all is and I'm really excited and, and it's great that you've put this together for, for us in Canterbury. So thanks very much. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you.